Hi, welcome to PMOD Monthly for November. This month we are focusing on the PMOD Wi-Fi, which uses an IEEE 802.11G uh, compliant radio transceiver from Microchip. The reason we're focusing on Wi-Fi this month is because we have recently added a reference design that will allow you to get up and running quickly with Wi-Fi on any one of your Digilent FPGA boards, turning them into powerful IoT platforms. We've added the PMOD Wi-Fi to the list of PMOD IP cores for easy drag and drop into MicroBlaze designs. And Tommy is going to go through, step by step, how to get up and running with one of these designs, plus give a high-level overview of how the network stack and the HTTP server work. Before we discuss the HTTP server and the network stack, we're going to get started with our MicroBlaze or Zinc design. For this demo, we're using an ARDI board with the PMOD SD connected in JC with a FAT32 SD card plugged in um, and a PMOD Wi-Fi connected to JA. If you don't have the ARDI, you can also use any of our Arctic 7 FPGA boards or Zinc boards. Um, most of them have SD card readers on them, so you don't actually need the PMOD SD in their case. So for this demo, we're using Bovado 2016.2. I'm um, going to name the project HTTP server. Now you should already have the Bovado boards library installed. If you don't, follow the link below for instructions on how to do that. Back in here, we're going to uh, we're going to select the ARDI board and click Next and Finish to create our project. Click Project Settings, IP, Repository Manager, and if you don't already have the Vado library installed, um, follow the link below to download that and unzip it to a directory that you'll remember. All right, select the Vado library. Um, now that we've done that, click OK. Create a block design. Click the board tab. Double click DDR3 SD RAM and press OK to, to instantiate a memory interface into your design. Uh, delete the clock ref I and sysclock I that are auto generated and click and drag the system clock into your block design. Double click the clocking wizard that was generated. Go to output clocks, enable clock out 2 and clock out 3, and set the frequency of clock out 2 to 200 and the other one to 166.667. Make sure you set the reset type to active low before clicking OK. All right, now we're going to click and drag our USB UART out there to add a UART block. Double click that UART block and select 115.200 as the baud rate. All right, now click Add IP, type in MicroBlaze and double click that to add a MicroBlaze processor to your design. Click Run Block Automation, set local memory to 32 kilobytes and cache configuration to 32 kilobytes. And make sure you enable the interrupt controller box before pressing OK. Double click connector JA, scroll down to find PMOD Wi Fi, and double click PMOD out to add a PMOD Wi Fi block to your design. Now double click connector JC, find PMOD SD, and double click PMOD out to create a PMOD SD. All right, find your PMOD Wi Fi block and find the WF interrupt pin. Uh, we're going to be connecting that to our CONCAT block connected to our interrupt controller. Double click the CONCAT block and set the number to 1 since we only have one interrupt. Click and drag the N0 from the CONCAT block to the WF interrupt pin. All right, now let's go ahead and add some GPIOs to our block design. Click and drag four LEDs to the block design to add an AXI GPIO block. Click and drag four RGB LEDs to add those to the first GPIO block. Now drag four switches on to create a new GPIO block. Click the LED GPIO block and rename it AXI GPIO LED. Click the switch GPIO block and rename it AXI GPIO SW for switch. Now that we have all our blocks on our block design, click Run Connection Automation, select All Automation, and you can actually unselect MicroBlade Zero since those automations will be done in the process. And click OK. 
This will connect all your peripherals and your memories and everything to your MicroBlaze processor. All right, so it looks like I forgot to connect my clocks to my MIG. So find clock out two, which is 200 megahertz. Drag that to the memory interface generator, clock ref I. So 200 megahertz goes to clock ref I, 166.667 megahertz goes to sys clock I. Now that that's all done, validate your design. If it's successful, click sources. Right click design one and create HDL wrapper. Let Fado do that, press OK. And now that you have an HDL top level, click generate bitstream, save the block design if you haven't. This process could take anywhere between 5 and 40 minutes on your, depending on your computer. Now that the bitstream is created, we're going to click file, export, export hardware and make sure you include the bitstream before clicking OK. That'll hand off the hardware wrapper to SDK and we can now launch SDK. Now that we got our MicroBlaze design ready, let's take a step back and look at the network stack. So first, the DEIP C layer is this layer right in here inside the utility folder of the DEIP CK folder. It's a portable layer that supports a hardware abstraction layer and network adapter abstraction. Currently, the HAL supports the PIC32 and, is, and we've ported it to work with MicroBlaze and uh, Zinc designs. DEIP had as a design goal to be in compliance with IEEE RFC 793 and implementation clarification RFC 1122. The DEIP CK layer is a C++ layer on top of the DEIP layer, originally developed to bring network to Chipkit. This layer wasn't specifically made for MicroBlaze and Zinc designs, but it works just fine. The HTTP server, designed by Keith Fogel, was originally a Chipkit application built on the DEIP CK C++ layer. Since then, we've ported it to work with MicroBlaze and Zinc as well. Those are the main layers of the network stack. Without further ado, let's get into the HTTP server. Getting back into some detail, let's find out how to toggle your GPIO pins over your network. Now that we're in SDK, if you look to the left, you'll see your hardware platform. Um, open the drivers. Um, press F5 if everything doesn't show up. Um, now open PMOD Wi-Fi and examples, and you'll see the HTTP server. You're going to want to copy the files within this folder onto your SD card before we continue. Let's create a new application project. Let's name it HTTP server um, and make sure the language is in C++ before you click finish. This will create an HTTP server project down below. Uh, open the source folder, you'll see main.cc. And we're gonna copy all the we're gonna copy all the files except for the copy of these to your SD card folder into this source file, into this source folder. Now that all our files are copied over, you'll notice that there's an error there. This is because our GPIO block is uh, named something different. This add pins function adds pins to the HTML page, which we'll find on our server. If we go back into Vivado, we can double click the AXI GPIO LED and click IP configuration to see the GPIO width is 4. The 0 stands for output. We're going to repeat this for the second channel, so we're going to make the first parameter XPAR AXI GPIO LED base address plus 8, which is the second channel. Um, the length is 12, so the number of pins is 12, so we'll set that as our second parameter, and 0 for output. We're going to repeat this one more time for our switches, so XPAR AXI GPIO switch base address. Um, there's four switches, and we're going to do an input, so we're going to put a one there. Now we go in and configure our router settings in the HTTP server config.h. 
So the HTTP server config contains um, your static IP address. If they're left as zeros, it'll automatically get an address from the DHCP server. So we'll change the SSID to the name of your router. And if you're using a WPA2 passphrase, change the SC passphrase to your password to your router. Save that. Okay, make sure you have your RD connected to your computer before clicking program. This will program the bitstream of the block design you created earlier onto your RD board. Open your favorite serial terminal and open the um, and open the COM port for the RD board that you're using. Make sure you set the serial port baud rate to 115,200. Now you want to select your project, select run as launch on hardware system debugger and it'll and it'll start the microblaze program on your device. You should see text pop up in the serial terminal once you start your program. This console will display a bunch of useful information about networks nearby. Once it's done connecting, it should show five sockets listening on IP and whatever your IP is. That's the address that your server is now hosted on. If we open up our browser and navigate to 192.168.1.204, which is what, what I'm connected to, we should see the home page of our HTTP servers pop up. You can click these links to navigate to different pages on the SD card, or click the external links that navigate to web pages outside of the server. What we're interested in here is the read and modify board pins page. So we'll click that to get to the pins page. Here you'll see a list of all the different pins that we connected earlier. We can select digital output high or digital output low for each pin and they'll be immediately updated on your RD. Down below you'll see digital inputs. These will display the switch states on your RD. If you change some switches around and press refresh, you should see the pin value change accordingly. If you watch the console while you click each link, the console will display various information about the server. Now that we know that it works, let's check out how it works. Um, all the magic happens within HTML get pins.cpp. The pins page is dynamically created each time you call it, unlike all the other HTML pages included in the server. Um, at the top of the file, you'll see a string containing the header of the HTML page. Followed by some other strings. Followed by the end of the HTML page. A lot of the magic happens in the Compose HTML Get Pins page. The pin states are received using a post command sent when you click the refresh button. The post pins command contains all of the different form items, which are the pins, as well as their states. This command is parsed by finding the last underscore and then taking that state and assigning it to the pin, basically, through a couple other functions. If you'd like to learn more about the HTTP server or the DEIP CK libraries, check out the link below to find a PowerPoint that was used at the Microchip Masters back in 2014. The slideshow contains a lot of valuable information regarding networking and the stack in general. So it'd be a good idea to check it out. And that's it. You should now have a working IoT platform on your FPGA. To see a written tutorial on how to use the PMOD IP cores or for any other downloads you need, remember to check the links below. To encourage you to give this project a try, we're offering the PMOD Wi-Fi for 30% off the entire month of November. All you need to do is enter in the code PMOD Monthly NOV16 at checkout on the Digilent store. Thanks for watching and check the links below the video for more information and please subscribe to stay up to date with Digilent's products and services.